so essential tremor which we uh, which is pretty common condition mm. you know typically runs in families um now that is another condition that um you can either you sort of have distributions like you either get it around your 20s or later on in your 50s or 70s a very disabling condition i mean some people so have it so how do you differentiate mild. between the parkinson's tremor and essential tremor just for our viewers so the parkinson tremor uh, by definition is a resting tremor mm-hmm. but it's not all you know you can have additional things so this postural right. tremor so when i mean you know when you're holding a certain posture you see your hand shaking right. so you can also see that in parkinson's but with the sen- essential tremor it is mostly an action related tremor so it's disabling to the patient because of that like right. every time they go to do something you know they can't they can't put a spoon to their mouth you know they can barely brush or shave or comb their hair because the tremor is just you know it depends on how bad it is mm-hmm. some it starts off it is again a progressive condition so it depends on how bad uh the symptoms are initially it is managed with medications uh, again you want to make sure that it's not because there is a caveat here mm-hmm. now we know from observing these patients for a while that a lot of these uh, well not a lot some of these uh, essential tremor patients actually transition to parkinsons so it's called an essential tremor pd spectrum okay so what i do is generally when i when i'm certain that okay this is mostly essential tremor i still make sure i don't catch any signs on their exam of parkinsonism you know mm-hmm. if i do i tell the patient you know i tell them okay you know what i'm catching some mild symptoms mm-hmm. here right mm-hmm. now let me see you back in a few months and i'll check you know i'll examine these again and if after two or three years you know they haven't really developed much you can be fairly certain that it's not but you do i i do have patients who have both so True. if they are clearly and then again you have to ask them so what if i have a patient who's got an action tremor that's really bothersome but then you have this you know this overlap of where they also have a rest tremor mm.